afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another session of Teams in 20. Today, we're talking about productivity hacks and uh, something that I get really excited about. We've got hundreds of these, but today, I think we're going to be talking about five of, of uh, our favourites. So let's get started. I'm excited, as always, uh, but this week, I'm excited to introduce you to Neve Birmingham. Uh, you may have seen Neve before if you joined some of our uh, sessions before on approvals. If you missed that, have a look at the YouTube channel. Uh, it's in a great session. And I'm going to hand straight over to Neve because time is against us as always. And over to you, Neve. Brilliant. Thanks, Joe. Um, so, yeah, as Joe said, we are going to cover today top that some of the, my favourite five um, productivity hacks that you can take away and use from today. But we are also going to touch on some features which are going to be coming soon. Um, and also there's one application that we're going to cover today um, that is actually only a small part of what the application can do. It's one of my favourites and we're going to have a session on that application as a whole um, at a later date. But yeah, I'm excited to get into it. So let's make a start. So the first one is about reacting to an email. So we're going to start really simple, but this is actually a feature that not many people know about. Um, and this can be really great for acknowledging someone's email without actually having to take the time to respond to them. So it definitely saves you time, but it also saves the sender of the email time as they won't have lots of multiple replies to sort through. So when you receive an email that you want to send a reaction to, you um, can select the smiley face button, which is next to the reply or forward um, button on the top right hand side of your screen. When you click that smiley face button, you will see your reactions pop up across the top and you can select the most appropriate one. Um, when people have reacted to that email, you'll be able to see those reactions um, in the same place as where you actually send the reaction. So under the reply and the forward button. And when you hover over those reactions, you'll be able to see who has reacted um, and what reaction they have selected. Now, as the sender of the email, you will also get notifications when people have reacted to your emails and you will get these from the activity bell on the top right hand side of your outlook. Um, and you will see what reaction has been sent and who it's been sent by. So a really simple one, a really quick one, but um, all of that time saved from sending acknowledgement emails can be reinvested into something more value add. OK, so moving on to the next one, this is something called loop components, which I will um, play the video in just one moment. Um, but loop components are one of my favourite things to use. They save so, so much time and it's a really exciting app, which we're going to be um, talking more through in a future session of Teams in 20. Um, but essentially, if you've ever sent some content in a chat and you just wished that your team could add their ideas and feedback right, and send, right inside of that message without having to have loads of back and forth or sending a load of files, and this is where Loop Components comes in. So I'm going to play this quick video now and then we'll break it down. Microsoft Loop introduces the next generation of co-creation, bringing together teams and their work across Microsoft 365 apps. Kick off a project and gather ideas. Bring your team together. Everyone can contribute in real time in the same place and stay in sync whether you're working in Teams chat or Outlook. So you can make decisions efficiently and easily share final decisions with everyone. Wherever your teammates are, whenever they are online, whichever collaboration tool they prefer, everyone is in the loop, allowing you to think, plan, and create together. Okay, so if you haven't seen Loop before, hopefully you're really excited by that. Um, so Loop components are essentially fluid components that are shared with groups of people to help co-create. And they are built for collaboration. So when you send a Loop component, everyone in your chat can edit that in line. Um, and this means that you see those changes instantly. So you can collaborate right inside of that chat message. And as your colleagues are typing, you will see that in real time as well. Um, they are automatically saved as well. So they're automatically saved to your OneDrive, which means that you can find them from office.com in addition to Teams as well. Um, I suggest when you um, name your Loop components that you give them an easy to remember title. Um, this is also um, the file name that 
um, it will be named. So it will really help you um, find them really quickly if you give them a, a suitable name. Um, and then you can start a loop component in one chat, but you can also copy it and share it into another chat to get more people um, collaborating on that same component. And no matter where your edits are made, the component will always show the latest changes. So they work across Teams, Outlook and Whiteboard at the moment, and they are soon coming to Word, Excel and PowerPoint. So lots of exciting stuff coming in the world of Loop. So let's show you how you can actually use them. So when you are in a chat message, um, if you look across the bottom uh, along the messaging extensions, you will be able to click on the loop icon, which is it's very similar to the, it's the same icon as what's at the top of the screen if you're struggling to see that. Um, and when you click on there, you will get um, a load of options to choose from. So you could choose a bulleted list or a checklist, maybe a table or even a task list as well. Um, and this can be really good for things like collaborating on agendas before meetings. So um, in this example, I have clicked the bulleted list um, to create an agenda, but we're going to cover some more use cases in a moment. So um, when I have clicked the bulleted list, I have given it a title, which is the agenda for my meeting and um, added some content and then I can click send and that will send it into the chat that I'm having with Adele. So I will be able to see Adele adding items to my agenda and as well as I can add the same items um, some similar items on the agenda too. We can both be doing that at the same time. Now, this is um, something that's just sent in a chat message. So it can easily get lost um, when more sort of chats are added below because it can quickly come off the screen. So a top tip for this is if you hover over the loop component and click the three dots, you'll be able to pin that message. And what that does is it pins that loop component at the top of your chat. So whenever you want to navigate to that loop component, you can just click that at the top of your screen rather than having to scroll back through and find it. Um, and the last couple of things I wanted to cover on here is um, on the top right hand side image, I've sort of um, highlighted those three icons and um, the first one, which is sort of like the four squares next to each other. This will if you click on that, this will show you where you shared that leap component. So if you shared it in Outlook or in a different Teams chat or even in a whiteboard that if you click on that, that will show you exactly where you shared it. The button in the middle, which is like the two squares together, this is the copy button. So if you want to copy this from your Teams chat into um, an email. You click that button and then just control V into your email um, and that will paste that loop component there. And, and if you remember, as I mentioned a moment ago, any updates made in the Teams chat would also be updated in the version in Outlook as well. You just have that one version of the truth. And then the last button on the top right hand side, which is like the, the little people icon, and um, this will show you who this loop component is shared with and who has access to collaborate on this. And um, so that's what those three buttons are for at the top. OK, so let's um, give you some use cases. So we've already covered co-collaborating on an agenda, um, which is something that I use this for all the time. Um, but it's actually really great for using loop components after the meetings happened as well. So you can capture any meeting notes and you can have everybody in your meeting adding to those meeting notes um, as and when you go. Um, and it's also great for catching um, action items as well. So there's actually um, a loop component, which is a task list, and this integrates with um, the tasks app in Teams as well. So you can pop your tasks in there, you can assign them to individuals, and you can add a due date. And then when they're assigned to those individuals, they will be able to see them in their task list under assigned to me in the um, Teams app for tasks and planner and to do. Um, it's also really great for like co-authoring. So if you wanted to get some help from your teammates to maybe find the right words, um, you can use a loop component to start writing an intro to a presentation or maybe a social media post or even maybe an important email and your teammates can help you with that one. Um, or even things like compiling data. So sending out a table component, which is clearly labeled columns and rows for your team. Um, and in each cell, you can describe the data that you need and you can at mention the person that you think is best to provide that. Um, I actually used this recently. I went to visit one of my customers and do a tour of their factory and we needed to um, wear like, protective clothing. So we needed to have steel toe cap boots. We needed um, to wear like a jacket, a hairnet and a beard net if people needed that. And so we used the table component for our team to collate that information um, so that it wasn't those backwards and forwards. And then we could copy that into an email and send it across to the customer so they knew um, everyone's sizes and what was required before we got there. So 
so many different things, um, but rec strongly recommend playing around with that one. It's definitely one of my favourite apps. And like I mentioned earlier, there is an upcoming session on the whole world of Loop um, that's going to be covered later in July because this is just one tiny little bit of it. OK, moving on. So number three, this is messaging everyone in a chat. It is a um, relatively new feature that not many people are aware of. Um, so if you're in a group chat and you want to get the attention of everybody by uh, making sure everyone has a notification, you can now type the app symbol and um, select everybody. And that means that everyone gets a notification in that group chat that um, you sent a message. Um, previously, we'd have to app mention everybody individually. So this is a big time saver um, and hopefully that really helps. Okay, number four, this is dictating. So we spend so much time typing um, and it can be quite tiring, but we also um, quite often speak quicker than we can type. And so dictation is a really great way to save you some time. Um, so dictation lets you use speech to text to author your content across Office. Um, and you can use your voice to really quickly create documents, emails, notes, presentations, slide notes, etc. Um, and you will find the dictate button on the home tab in any Word document, PowerPoint, OneNote or Outlook email as well. So when you click that button, you would just wait um, for it to turn on and start listening. And then you can literally just um, say what you want to appear on your screen and you can insert punctuation by saying it explicitly. So like saying, thanks all for joining, full stop. It was great to have you here, full stop. Um, so it's really, it's something I use all the time. I actually tend to use it later on in the day when I'm sort of a bit done with typing. Um, and it's a real time saver. Now, something that is coming soon is something called the accessibility ribbon. And I've popped the roadmap ID on the top right hand side if it's something that you want to track, but it's also in the resources section at the end of this presentation. Um, but this is a new tab that's coming across Office, and this is where all of your accessibility features will be. Um, so Dictate will soon appear in there. Um, but one of my favourites is Check Accessibility. If you haven't um, used this before, it's amazing. Um, you can just click that button, it will scan your document and check where you could be um, maybe creating something that's a little bit more accessible, like maybe adding alternate text against your photos or maybe um, choosing the order in which a screen reader might um, read that document. So I'm um, really excited for this one to launch and it should be coming very soon. OK, moving on to number five. So this is creating a task from a message in Teams. So we have definitely all been there when someone asks you to do something on Teams and you get distracted by something else and then you end up completely forgetting. Um, so creating a task from a message in Teams is like a really quick way to add a task to your to-do list in just a few simple clicks. So when somebody sends you a message that you want to add as a task, you can click on, hover over that message and click the three dots and under more actions, you have create task. When you click on create task, you will um, see the task pop up where you can um, edit the details. So you can give it a new title that's something a little bit more meaningful um, and you can actually choose where you want this to land. So if you drop down where it says task, where I've highlighted on the screen, you then get um, a few options. So you can either add this to your own personal task for your own to do list. But if you think it would be more suitable in a planner board that you've got shared with a, a team of people, you can select the planner board um, the, where you think it'd be most suitable. So if you add a task to your to-do list in tasks, which is just for yourself, you can edit the task name, you can edit the priority, the due date, and you can also edit the notes as well. Um, if you add um, a task to a planner plan, um, then you can edit the task name, priority, due dates, notes, progress and bucket as well. So you get a few more options if you add it to a plan. Um, so for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to add it to my personal tasks. So I've given it um, a more meaningful name. So I've changed it to commercial view slides and um, I've chosen for it to go into tasks and I sort of left the notes as um, they were where the message that it came from. Once I'm happy, I can click add task. And then that then appears in my task section in the tasks app in Microsoft Teams. And um, if you haven't used the task app before, the way that you can access that app is to click on the three dots on the left hand rail, search for 
um, tasks and then you can open up that um, that app there and if it's something that you will be using on a regular basis that you actually find quite useful you can right click on that um, on that app and you can pin it so it stays on that left hand navigation rail for you so you don't have to go through the three dots every time. So that was the top five productivity hacks for today. Um, this is um, the resources section and I believe that Joe is going to be sharing these um, in um, YouTube afterwards as well. But Joe, should I pass back over to you if there's any questions? Yeah, that's brilliant. Thanks, Neve. Well, there's been a hive of activity in the chat. People have oh. <laughs> a ton of questions about Loop. Um, okay. I posted some links in there. Um, I think we actually are um, not the next session, the session after, we we're going to do a, a bigger deep dive into Loop. So I think we're going to, we'll take some of these questions today and make sure that we can come back, especially about things like, you know, um, Loop for external users and things like that. That is that on the roadmap? I, I, I can't see it on the roadmap at the moment, but um, I've shared the actual roadmap uh, that we have visible at the moment in the chat. Uh, I think, yeah, there's there's a few people asking about access as well. Loop does need to be switched on. It's not something that's automatically switched on in your tenant. Tell me, Neve, if I've, if anything's changed since um, since I last looked at this. But yeah, it does need to does need to be switched on. Um, so if you can't see it, that's probably why. Uh, but we'll we'll show all that information with you as well. That is it. We are nearly at our twenty minutes. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you spending your lunch uh, um, twenty minutes with us as always. Do fill in the survey. I'll pop the link to that in the chat and do continue to add to your questions here. Thanks, Neve. Brilliant as always. Hopefully you'll come and do another session for us in the future. Okay. Take care, everybody. Thanks a lot. <laughs>